Hi, this is the making of a aloe cucumber soap. Room temperature method is what I am using for this one. Now this is one of Jan Berry's recipes from her brand new book. It's called Simple and Natural Soap Making. I am Tina Monk, the author of the Soap Making Handbook Volume 1 and the creator of the eCourse Masterclass Advanced Soap Formulations and they are available at naturalsudsandmore.com If you have never made soap before, please stop here and go watch my lye safety video and beginner cold process video. Now if you've never seen anything done with the room temperature method before, this is basically using hot lye to melt your hard oils. And um, Jan's recipes are very simple and it's very easy to do with the room temperature method. And it's a really quick way to do cold process. Now I showed you a picture of the wheatgrass that I used and I did add that to the lye water. And I mixed up the lye in the water so this is hot lye water that's going over the coconut oil to melt it. Now in the room temperature method you are basically just using the hot lye water to melt your hard oils and then you are adding your liquid oils after the hard oils are melted. Now this only works if you have hard oils that melt easy um, that they're not super hard, like hard butters or trying to melt beeswax or something like that, it won't work. But if, like, coconut oil melts really easy, so um, this is a really great one to do that with. And it makes cold process go faster <laughs> if you have um, short on time as well, too, if you don't want to wait for your hard oils to melt down. But that's uh, another reason why I like Jan's recipes, because they are that simple that you can do this with, and you can make cold process um, fast that way with the room temperature method. Now, um, some of the prep work that I did for this soap. Um, in her book, her recipe uses uh, fresh aloe and fresh cucumber. I only had uh, fresh cucumber, so I just used some aloe that I had... Um, previously bought to add to this but the prep work for the cucumber or if you do have um, a fresh aloe plant that you would like to use um, what I did is I, I have a Nutribullet so I cut up my cucumber and put it in my Nutribullet with some water and then I just blend it and then I strained it so I'm basically only adding the aloe juice and the cucumber juice to this now that the so that the coconut oil was completely melted, so now I am adding my liquid oils to this. Remember, if you uh, want this recipe, it is in Jan Berry's new book, Simple and Natural Soap Making. And um, today's date um, is right at the beginning of August uh, 2017, and her book is available for pre-order only until August 8th. 2017. And for those that pre-order the book, she does have a free e-course on soap making available to you guys. Um, so please check that out. I do have the links um, on my blog. Um, there's a recipe that she gave me to post on my blog as well. So the link for the book is there. And it is also in the files of my Facebook group, Soap Making and Business Coaching. So there's a free recipe in there from Jan and uh, the link to the book if you'd like to pre-order it and take advantage of the free e-course that she's offering. And remember that's only until August 8, 2017. So but if you're watching this after August 8, then you can just order the book. <laughs> so um, I, I absolutely love the book you guys. Um, I love Jan's style and um, I think she's just an amazing person in Soper and I hope you guys check that out. So um, when you're doing the room temperature method, um, you're not as concerned about temperatures here. 
So if you add the hot lye to the oils, and then by the time you add your liquid oils, you're going to be soaping around 90 to 100 degrees, usually. And this is something that I have um, never done. I've never used wheatgrass. And I don't normally add um, colors to my lye water, because I normally like to do um, different colors, so I'll add the colors at trace. Um, so this was... Um, all kinds of different for me so that's uh, one of the reasons I told Jan I wanted to do this recipe because I've never done a soap with cucumber before and I'm really anxious to try this soap out and see how this is and I also um, want to see how the the wheatgrass does throughout the cure as well too see if there's any color changes with it or anything like that so um, if you if you have experiences with uh, using wheatgrass, uh, please comment and let me know. And if you guys have questions about anything, please comment and let me know on the video or you can also ask in the Facebook group. Now, um, since I'm only doing one mold with this, and hey, um, just a quick point, if uh, you get a, her book and you need to resize a recipe to fit your mold, um, a quick easy way to do that Brambleberry.com has um, a resizer on their light -like calculator. So if you put the recipe in and then you hit resize to the ounces of oils that you need, it will give you um, a new recipe that'll fit your mold. So, and I've had people ask me that before. So it's really simple, so you don't have to do all the math by yourself. So um, you can just go to Brambleberry.com and use their light -like calculator and resize it which um, is what I did for this too because um, my mold is quite a bit bigger. And I'm also um, using my KitchenAid stick blender here just because I'm only doing uh, one mold and um, it does tend to create some air bubbles but I was okay with that for this. Now here I am adding um, lemongrass essential oil I'm complementing the wheatgrass with lemongrass and I'm also adding sodium citrate which is dissolved in some water and then I'm also adding the cucumber and aloe juice there now um, if you're interested in how to use like sodium citrate and citric acid there is a lot of math involved in using citric acid anytime you add an acid to a base you get a salt hence soap but anytime you add any type of other acid to your soap, you are going to be consuming some lye. And if you don't correctly calculate for that, you are going to be upping your super fat. Um, so there really has to be some extra calculations done if you were adding extra acids. Um, so if you want to add um, citric acid, which does convert to sodium citrate when it's combined with the lye, um, I do have an extra e-course that it's it's just by itself on how to use citric acid in soap making there is some stoichiometry involved and um, I break it down so it's really easy to understand and give you the exact numbers that you have to do and there's a, quite a bit of information and videos and everything that it really break that down and explain how to add citric acid to your soaps and if you're wondering why to add citric acid to your soaps, um, it is a salt, so it does add hardness. But when it converts to the sodium citrate, it becomes a chelating agent, which means that it helps um, boost lather in hard water, and it also helps reduce soap scum. And I did my own test uh, with our shower because we have really hard water. So if you're interested in that, it is part of the Masterclass Advanced Soap Formulations and it's a standalone course as well so you can go to my website natural suds and more and check that out um if you have any questions about it as well um, please ask because i'm adding it to all my soaps the sodium citrate or the citric acid but just remember if you add any more acid you have to account for the extra lye consumed or your super fat will be increased okay but here um this worked really beautifully and I, the green color was really beautiful too and it's really bright here but um, like you'll see I'll show you the cut at the end 
where um, it does get darker, and I am curious to see how um, this will work throughout the cure, how the color will change, because you never know with plant colorants how um, they'll hold up, so I'm curious about that. You know, and I normally, um, like I said, I normally soap with different colors that are added at Trace, and I don't usually do one color soap. So this is why I wanted to do this. It was something completely different for me. And I don't normally do the room temperature method because I normally use a lot harder butters and things that, um, you know, need more heat <laughs> to melt. But that's, you know, you know, such a great thing about Jan's recipes. They are really simple. They are quick and they are easy to do. And um, so please um, check that book out. It's I'm absolutely loving it, you guys. Simple and Natural Soap Making by Jan Berry, who is also the nerdy farm wife. If you have not checked out her blog, um, go do that. Lots and lots of recipes and information on her blog. Now, if I do a plain soap or, you know, like this, I am going to, like, texturize the top. I do um, a little bit of a whisk twist, which I'll show you here in a sec. But always make sure that you tap down your mold to try to even it out and make sure you get any air bubbles out. Although I knew that the KitchenAid uh, stick blender was going to create a lot of air bu bubbles in it. And uh, what that looks like is like white specks in the soap give the air bubbles. But So that's, that's a sign to another tip. Um, your stick blender if it's wearing out. Um, I did buy an all clad and it's awesome, but it's a little bit too big for um, a one one mold for me, so that's why I went for the KitchenAid. But yeah, if your stick blender is wearing out, you will notice a lot of white specks throughout your soap, which are air bubbles. It somehow forces the air through it in into the soap, so. That's just your sign that you need a new stick blender. But I am loving the all clad. Uh, it's a more expensive stick blender, but uh, it's it's great. That's just a little whisk twisk. <laughs> whisk twisk. So that's pretty much pretty much it. You just play with it. So it really helps um, when I'm doing these that if it's going to be texturized on top. I want it to be thick enough so that I can do that with. If it's not, then I um, let it sit until it is thick enough for me to do something with. Yeah, I can't wait to try this soap with the aloe and the cucumber and the wheatgrass. Yeah, if you have any questions, um, please let me know. And you can also uh, contact Jan Berry too and ask her questions if you have any questions about the book or recipes and don't forget that there's a free recipe from her on my blog and in the files of my Facebook group Soap Making and Business Coaching. And we have over 17,000 people in the group right now so if you're not a member please join. I have lots of free uh, business workbooks in the files as well to help you get started. And uh, we're, you know, I'm there all the time to answer questions and do whatever I can to help you guys succeed. Here's the cut. The aloe cucumber soap. And here is a copy of the Simple and Natural Soap Making. I will also put a link to the book in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. You can also remember to check out Jan's blog, Nerdy Farm Wife. And please like uh, the video and subscribe to the channel, please. And you can also follow me on Instagram at Natural Suds and More and like my Facebook pages, Tina Monk and Natural Suds and More. Happy soaping!